All right, so are you ready to like dive into some seriously interesting data? Hmm. We're going right to the heart of the 2024 election. And where else would we start? But uh, those battleground states, you know, the ones I'm talking about where elections are won and lost by like a hair? Exactly. We're talking Arizona and Pennsylvania, mm -hmm. two states with totally different vibes. But when it comes to elections, they always keep us on the edge of our seats. We've got these brand new polls from the New York Times, Philadelphia Inquirer and Siena College all wrapped up just last week. Over 800 likely voters in each state. A real pulse check as we come up on November. And you know what? The big picture is, uh, well, let's just say it's a nail biter. Across the board, we're seeing these presidential and Senate races so close. Okay, so tight races, familiar battlegrounds. What's the headline for you? What's got you hooked? It's like this, remember those national polling averages? Mm -hmm. Yeah, these state-level polls mirroring those almost perfectly. We're talking razor-thin margins. It's like this. Every single vote, every conversation, every rally could be the difference between winning and losing. All right, so buckle up, everyone, because we're about to unpack what's making these races so close and why it matters for November. Let's start with Pennsylvania. This state has a history of being a true bellwether, and it looks like 2024 is no exception. What are we seeing in the numbers? Okay, so if you're a fan of nail biters, Pennsylvania is delivering. Kamala Harris is holding on to a lead over Donald Trump, but uh, That's an... it's slim. Slim being the key word here. Give us the numbers. 50% for Harris, 47% for Trump. Okay. Sounds familiar. Yep. That's yep. because it's basically unchanged for the last few times Siena polls. Oh. But hold on, before anyone celebrates or panics, got to remember the margin of error. It's like a statistical tie. Exactly. Every vote really does count in this scenario. But let's dig a little deeper. What issues are driving these numbers in Pennsylvania? What are voters talking about? One word, abortion. It's emerging as a potentially decisive issue. It's not just a talking point. Voters are seriously invested in this. Absolutely. We've seen abortion rights become a major, major motivator for voters in these recent elections. And this time around feels even more intense. Yeah, and it's interesting. These polls show Harris Harris with a solid 20-point advantage over Trump when it comes to, you know, handling abortion. That's huge. And, like, when you look at what Pennsylvanians say keeps them up at night, Abortion consistently ranks among their top concerns. This is personal for a lot of voters. So abortion's a big deal in Pennsylvania, but I'm guessing the economy is still like a major factor for voters, right? You bet. Even with abortion rights taking center stage, we can't underestimate the economy's pull, especially in a state like Pennsylvania with its history of, you know, industrial ups and downs. And yeah, where do things stand on that front? Well, this is where things get even more interesting. The economy is Trump's strongest suit in Pennsylvania. He's currently got an 11 point edge over Harris when it comes to, you know, who voters trust on economic issues. Wow, 11 points. That's a pretty significant lead for Trump. Is that a recent it development? It's been trending that way. Back in September, he was only up by four points on the economy. So his message seems to be gaining traction as we get closer to the election. It sounds like these candidates are really battling it out for voters' hearts and minds mm -hmm. on these, like, crucial issues. But there's always more to the story than just the top-line issues, right? right? What else are we seeing in the data when we look beyond the economy and abortion? Here's where the demographics get really fascinating. Remember how we often talk about the education gap and voting patterns? Yeah. Well, in Pennsylvania, that gap seems to be narrowing. Okay, walk us through that. What exactly does a narrowing education gap tell us about this election? Okay, so... Traditionally, voters without a college degree have leaned more towards Trump, while those with higher education have favored Democrats. But in this election, Harris seems to be chipping away at Trump's base, gaining some ground among those non-college educated voters. So she's appealing to voters who might not have like aligned with her party in the past. That's significant. Exactly. It suggests that she's finding ways to connect with voters outside of her traditional base. On the flip side, Trump seems to be making some inroads with more educated voters, a group that typically favors Democrats. So both candidates are trying to broaden their appeal and sway those crucial swing voters. It's a fascinating dynamic, and it shows just how unpredictable this election could be. It's like a game of chess, each candidate trying to outmaneuver the other. And speaking of tight races, we can't forget about the battle for the Senate seat in Pennsylvania. Incumbent Democrat Bob Casey is facing off against Republican challenger David McCormick. What's the latest on that front? Well, just like the presidential race, the Senate race in Pennsylvania is a real nail biter. Casey is clinging to a slight lead at 48% to McCormick's 44%. So another close one. But a lead is a lead, even if it's slim. Is Casey in a strong position to hold on to his seat? It's too close to call. 
While he does have a slight advantage, his support has actually dipped a bit since the last poll, while McCormick has gained some ground. A lot can change in these final weeks of the campaign. It sounds like Pennsylvania voters have some tough decisions to make. Both the presidential and Senate races are incredibly tight, with no clear frontrunner. But before we move on, any other key takeaways from the Pennsylvania data that you think our listeners should keep in mind? The key takeaway is that Pennsylvania is still very much up for grabs. Every vote truly could make a difference in both the presidential and Senate races. It's a state where the national trends are playing out in a microcosm, and the issues that matter most to Pennsylvanians, the economy, abortion, and the candidate's ability to connect with voters on a personal level will likely determine the outcome. Buckle up, because it's going to be a wild ride to November. Now, let's turn our attention to the Sun Belt and another state that's no stranger to close elections. Arizona, it's been trending more Republican in recent years, but can we definitively say it's a lock for Trump in 2024? Not so fast. While the polls do show Trump with a lead over Harris in Arizona, it's not the landslide some might expect. He's currently sitting at 51% to Harris's 46%. So a six-point lead, which, as we've established, isn't exactly a comfortable margin of this election cycle. It's consistent with his slight advantage in the national polls, but as you said, Arizona has a history of defying expectations. Absolutely. And we have to remember that these polls are just a snapshot in time. Things can change rapidly in politics, especially in a state like Arizona with its growing and increasingly diverse electorate. So we've got this tight race in Arizona, just like in Pennsylvania. But are the same issues like driving those numbers? Are Arizonans feeling those same economic anxieties as Pennsylvanians? Or is there something else going on here? Well, just like in Pennsylvania, the economy is a major, major talking point in Arizona. When you ask people who do they trust more to handle the economy, Arizonans give Trump the thumbs up by a margin of like 56 to 41 percent over Harris. It seems like that economic message is really resonating with voters no matter the state, especially for those who feel like their concerns aren't being addressed. It's true. And it's not just the economy as a whole. Arizonans also seem to trust Trump more when it comes to supporting, you know, working class voters, a group that often feels overlooked in political conversations. It's a message that's really landing. OK, so the economy is front and center in Arizona. Let's switch gears for a sec and talk about the Senate race, where we've got Democrat Ruben Gallego going up against Republican Kari Lake. Yeah. Now, Kari Lake is no stranger to the spotlight, and I gotta imagine this race is heating up. You're telling me. This Senate race is a roller coaster. It's like mirroring all the drama we've come to expect from Arizona politics. Gallego's currently holding on to the lead at 48%, but Leak's right there, right behind him at 41%. And here's the thing, a full 10% of voters are still undecided. Wow, 10% still haven't decided and it's this late in the game. That's a lot of voters up for grabs. It seems like neither candidate has really won over Arizona voters completely. It's wild, right? Both Gallego and Lake have a real shot at swaying those undecided voters, but they're going to have to connect with them on those issues that matter most. It's anyone's guess who comes out on top. Speaking of issues, we talked about how important abortion is in Pennsylvania. Arizona's got its own abortion drama unfolding, right? Yeah. Tell us about this ballot measure. Right. So unlike Pennsylvania, where it's about which candidate voters trust more on the issue, in Arizona, abortion is literally on the ballot. There's a measure that, you know, if it passes, would actually add abortion rights to the state constitution. But here's the thing. While a small majority still supports it, that support has actually gotten weaker since the last poll. It seems like even though abortion is a huge deal nationally, how it impacts the election might look different from state to state. It's interesting how complex this issue is. Totally. And that leads us to one of the most intriguing things we're seeing in the data, especially in Arizona, a real surge in ticket splitting, especially among younger voters and like Latino voters. Ticket splitting. That's really interesting. So tell us more about what's happening. It's fascinating, right? We're seeing voters, especially Latinas, who might be voting for Trump for president, but then they turn around and support Gallego, the Democrat, in the Senate race. It really challenges all those traditional ideas about voting blocks. It shows just how diverse the voters really are. These voters aren't just voting along party lines. They're making their own decisions based on all sorts of things. Exactly. They're thinking about the candidates, the specific issues, and like what they personally believe in. They're not afraid to go their own way and make their voices heard. It just goes to show we can't really make assumptions about how people will vote. So what does all of this mean for you listening right now as we get closer and closer to the election? We've seen how unpredictable things are, how close these races are, and how even in states so far apart, similar issues are what voters care about most. What are your big takeaways for us as we head toward November? 
These polls, they give us a glimpse, but they can't predict the future. Mm. Things change fast in politics, you know? I think the biggest thing is every single vote matters. Don't underestimate your power. That's right. Stay engaged, stay informed, and most importantly, make your voice heard this November 5th. It's going to be an exciting few weeks. And who knows, maybe we'll be back to break it all down and see how these early trends played out. Until then, keep asking those questions and stay curious.